What's going on everybody? It's Gideon from Mana Entertainment. I'm back after what seems like a very long time. But I uh, just wanted to share some thoughts and opinions with you guys. So this video right here is going to be about the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the points of what is being done and what I thought they could have done and how it would have been better for us as consumers. And uh, obviously, I don't want it to be an action RPG. So if you're of that mindset, feel free to comment below and tell me why you want it to be an action RPG. And I'll tell you my reasons in the video why I don't want it to be an action RPG. So I'll go ahead and pop that intro and then we'll get right into it. All right, so Final Fantasy VII Remake, right? The game is called Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's not called Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. It's not called Final Fantasy VII The After Years or whatever. And it's not called Crisis Core. I played Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core and I loved that game. I thought it was a really good game. And the reason that I liked it so much is because, you know, it was a spin-off of the series. It was actually a prequel in a way. But while it was a prequel, I feel like as a creative team, you have all the rights to do whatever you want with it because it's not the game that we remember. Now, what rubs me the wrong way is that I bought Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation with my hard-earned save money that I got from getting A's on my report card because my dad at the time actually told me, he was like, look, you're doing bad in school, I need you to pick it up and rather than you know kill me, which I didn't want, he was like, instead, how about for every A that you get, I'll give you 20 bucks. So bet your sweet dollar that I got all straight A's, that next report card. And I, I was able to buy Final Fantasy VII. It was one of the first games that I bought for myself. That was that one. And on the next report card, I got Zelda, Ocarina of Time for the N64. It was that time. It was that era, right? So, um... Anyway, I love Final Fantasy VII. I was always a fan of the Final Fantasies since 4, which in America was 2 for us. So I started with Final Fantasy 2, and one of my cousins that got me into the game, he wanted me to play it, and I didn't want to because at the time I was like, I don't want to read, like, this is so dumb, I just want to play, I want to, like, hit something with my sword, or I want to jump around like a Mario, like, I didn't want to read in a game. But then as he would read it out loud and he made it very fun for me, I was like, hmm, maybe there is something to this. I can see where the imagination can kick in. So I went back, I played Final Fantasy 1, and I'm like, wow, I really like this. This is a fun game. So yada yada, years pass by, Final Fantasy 7 comes out. Now at the time, I was expecting it to be on the N64 like everybody else was. And they kind of just dropped a bombshell. And I, I believe that was the E3 of 94, 95. I don't remember exactly, but... They basically said, oh, by the way, Final Fantasy VII, exclusively on PlayStation. We were like, what? What the heck? Like, who even has a PlayStation? You know what I mean? It was all about Nintendo. Super Nintendo and Genesis, yeah, I had both. I liked the Super Nintendo and the Genesis, but Nintendo was where it was at, man. That They were the kings, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, PlayStation comes in, and all of a sudden, they're not the kings anymore. Like, they come and they wrecked the floor with everybody. They came with Castlevania Symphony of the Night. They had the best arcade ports um, of Street Fighter because if you didn't have a Saturn, then PlayStation was the next best thing. And it was it was not that far off from the Saturn version of Street Fighter Alpha 2, Alpha 3, Marvel vs. Capcom, those kind of games. Like, they were all great. Um, Legacy of Kain, Blood Omen, I really loved that game. Uh, I even played, what was that, Battle Arena Toshinden. But anyway, let me not get off to topic too much. So, Final Fantasy VII was a turn-based RPG using the, the system that they had already made popular in Final Fantasy IV, which is the ATB, Active Time Battle System, right? And it was a, an RPG where, where you had to, like, you know, they did fun things, like they did a lot of like side quests, which was starting to happen already, like in Final Fantasy VI, uh, which was three for us, and Chrono Trigger, where like they had side things like the motorcycle battle, you know, in six they had, um, they had like things that you could do in the overworld and secrets that you could find, but seven, you know, it was the first time that the series was 3D, and I was just like, wow, this looks amazing. And obviously it didn't age that well. So ever since I looked back at how much it didn't age well, I was always like, man, I just want, all I need is for them to make the same exact game. If they want to add story, they want to add quest, whatever, fine. Just make the same exact game, give us a new fresh coat of paint for whatever console generation or computer generation we're in. Give me new updated audio, 
Uh, you know, like I just want it to be recorded at a higher audio rate. I want, you know, the, the new sound effects. I want it to look and sound amazing, but I want to re-experience the game. So naturally, when I see Final Fantasy VII Remake, I think to myself, it's a remake, yes, this is gonna be so cool. I get to re-experience a game that I love, but with all the bells and whistles of the new generation, of the new console graphics, you know? And um, it's not that. Now it's a button masher, where you basically press X all day, and that's how you get to your ATB gauge, so that then you can choose your special moves, you can do spells, you can do summons, and I mean, at least they tried, quote unquote, to keep that in, but I feel that because they did that, there's so much that there's so much wrong about it, okay? And let me start off. All right. First of all, if they wanted to make it an action RPG, couldn't they have gone the route of Tales of Symphonia or any of the Tales games where you get into your battle, as in traditional Final Fantasies, and then you make it an action RPG, right? Where you're like in an arena and you can fight the characters doing all your action bullcrap, which I hate anyway. But I, I like it. I love action RPGs, but I don't want Final Fantasy VII to be an RPG. But if you had to do it that way, how could you have made it one game? You know how? You make the battle system action RPG, right? Like a hybrid. Then you keep the game as it was. An overworld RPG where you have your overworld, you know, you have your overworld map, you have your, your locations that are more detailed and more beautiful looking or whatever. And they literally could have done this and made the one game. Final Fantasy VII Remake, just one game. But no, instead what happens is, is that now, because they did this battle engine, they needed to justify the fact that, hey, it's too big, look at how much details are going on, it's all deeply, like 3D. You know, they could have even done the Resident Evil 1 Remake way, which was just update the heck out of the pre-rendered backgrounds, and that looked really good. They even had a lighting system that made it look more realistic, and there's all sorts of things that artists are amazing. Artists can do amazing things with, with tech, with minimal things, right? I don't need Final Fantasy VII to be a Final Fantasy XIV. I don't need it to be 11 or 15. I just need it to look like it's made in the new generation. But for that, does it have to be a action RPG? So my question is then, if it has to be an action RPG in order to get with the times, then let's make a new Pokemon Snap. But guess what? Now it's a first person shooter where you're shooting Pokemon in the head and you're buying uh, in-app purchases for your Pokemon, I mean, for your Pokemon hunting guns. And hey, why not, right? Pokemon Snap, snap them right in the head and they're dead. All right, so there's no need to change the genre of the game. And this is my biggest complaint about Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I feel that because they did, now they can justify making it into two, possibly three, maybe even four releases, right? Because they want to make money for all the money that they quote unquote missed out on with the previous Final Fantasies that haven't been doing so great, that haven't reviewed as well, that haven't been, you know, as loved by the fans as what made them famous in the first place. And I feel like it's a smack in the face to Final Fantasy VII fans to basically say, here, I'm going to take what you love and change it because you grew up as a person. So therefore, there's no way that you could possibly love something that you loved in the past. That to me is like... Come on, guys, really? Like, you had you had to do that. You couldn't trust that we would like it as a turn-based RPG. And if you wanted to make it an action RPG, just call it something else. Call it Final Fantasy VII Reimagining. Final Fantasy VII Re-Envision. Final Fantasy VII Alternate. Whatever. Call it something else. Don't call it a remake. It's not a remake. Because I hear people use this argument. Oh, if it's a remake, then it needs to be different. Because if we were just going to do it the same then why not make a new game? Duh! Then why why not make a new game? Just make it a remake, guys. That's exactly what I've been saying. So I am kind of ranting right now. I wasn't trying to go that direction. But I feel that if they would have gone the route of a, of a Resident Evil 1 remake, they could have fit the entire game on one, two, maybe even three discs, three Blu-rays. And they could have made it super detailed. They could have had all the story segments and cutscenes that look amazing in 3D. You could have done all of that as cutscenes, but the actual gameplay, you could have left it true to the original with random battles. I mean, if you wanted to make the enemies appear on screen before you go into the battle screen, why not? Sure, fine. I would have been okay with that. I even would have been cool if they would have done the battle system a little bit more like Xenogears, where you can do combos and stuff if you want to keep it action-oriented for the players that apparently, you know, don't want to go through menus and, and stuff like that or don't want to have control of their party. But... There's just no way that you can justify to me that they needed to make that decision 
in order to be true to the fans. It's not a fan-made game. It's a money-made. It, this is a money grab, okay? All Square Enix wants to do is get as much of your dollars as possible. And they knew that they weren't going to get it from new IPs. And they knew that they weren't going to get it from Final Fantasies that people aren't familiar with or haven't grown to love like in the, in the old days, you know? Every Final Fantasy that was made by Hironobu Sakaguchi, who now owns Miss Walker, and I don't know if, he, if he's been doing anything after, you know, what he did at Miss Walker. Um, last thing I know was they had a mobile game, but yeah. Uh, everything that has been done by Sak Sakaguchi has been memorable. It's been timeless. It's one of those things that people remember, like, this is Final Fantasy, you know? And then you have Yasumi Matsuno-san, who um, I, I talk to him every now and then on Facebook, and... He, he's brilliant. The guy is a genius, and he made Final Fantasy XII. He was the, the the you know the mastermind behind that one, and I really like XII. But XII was new and it was modern, but it didn't go away from the turn-based roots. Even though you you could move around and it was actiony or whatever, you had you know your your had your choices. You had strategy. You had gambits, and there is a lot of strategy to turn-based RPGs. And I'll point to Persona Five. That is a game that, it, unless you play it on the easiest difficulty, you can't just breeze through pressing X all day. You have to think about, like, okay, what enemies are weak to this? What what are you weak to that these enemies can hit you with? And you need to plan accordingly. You see, that strategy is missing when you're playing an action RPG, because the focus of an action RPG is press as many buttons as you can, dodge enemies. It becomes more of an action game where the RPG is a secondary focus. I want my RPG to be the first focus, right? I mean, it's a role-playing game, but I like the turn-based focus because now I'm controlling a party and it matters to me if I die or not because I made the decisions that got my party there as opposed to, like, I just press buttons really well and I can dodge. You know, if I want to play an action game, I'll play God of War. If I want to play an action game, I'll play, I don't know, whatever else, uh, the Bayonetta, you know, if you're a Nintendo fan. They, on the Xbox, I don't know, they got all sorts of stuff, I bet. I just feel like Square Enix has not been respecting or or valuing their original fan base that made Final Fantasy the name that it is today. So with that being said, I'm not looking forward to Final Fantasy VII Remake. I will be skipping out. This is Gideon from Mana Entertainment. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed my viewpoint. If you agree with me, show me in the comments. Let me know what's up. I'll, I'll like your stuff. I'll talk to you guys. I would, I would enjoy that. And if you disagree, let me know too. I would like to know why you don't agree. I know I have one friend who disagrees with me big time on this one, but I don't agree with him no matter how much he tells me, man. I just, <laughs> it's not that I want to be like stubborn about it, but yeah, it's just, it's not a remake. It's not a, a real remake. What it is, it's a reimagining, it's a re-envisioning, and it's a very underhanded, shady attempt to basically get your dollars multiple times because now they need to do so many more 3D models, so many more art assets. So many more, um, you know, open world environments, which has a whole slew of craziness attached to it. Like so many bugs that can go wrong and so much more testing. And it's going to cost us a pretty, pretty it's going to cost us so much money if you decide to buy it. So I don't know. I wouldn't go as far as saying I want to boycott the thing. But if my opinion has helped you, then you probably shouldn't spend any money on it because you're not going to get the full experience. And even if they add new stuff to it or new cool things that you could do that we weren't able to do before, is it really worth buying the game three times? That's the question you got to ask yourself. That's up to you. Getting in a man entertainment. Peace. Hope you enjoy.